Well, good evening, Life Groups. It's so great to be joining with you tonight in your living rooms and in your lounges, wherever it is that you are gathering this evening. And I pray that you are each doing well. And, you know, why don't you take a moment to tell the person next to you that you're stoked to be at Life Group with them. You know, tonight I'm going to unpack Paul's message uh, to us from Sunday, the 30th of April. We were continuing our series, Jesus Said, where we looked at Jesus' words to us from Matthew chapter 6. Let me read it to you here from Matthew 6, verse 25 to 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In the context here of teaching his disciples how to pray, just a few verses earlier, Jesus had taught them the Lord's Prayer. You know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus gives them a pattern of how they should pray, how we start with honoring God and we start with thanksgiving and gratitude. We start by putting God in his rightful place, but then we can ask for our needs. He says, pray, give us today our daily bread. Jesus teaches us a pattern of our priorities in prayer. But then he goes on to target what will probably be the most common subject of the prayers that we pray, worry. So often, Worry is the motivator that drives us to our knees in prayer. When we are concerned about something, when finances are tight, when we're worried about our children, when we find ourselves in situations that are uncomfortable, the worries of our lives are so often the things that end up filling our prayer lives. And I know this is true for me, so true. So often my prayers come from a place of worry. Lord, how am I going to get through this? Lord, please help me with this season. What am I to do next? Lord, help us in our finances. Help my kids with what they're going through right now. And that's okay because Jesus said he to cast all our cares onto him. It's right to come before him with the things that are concerning us. He cares infinitely and intimately about the details of our life. But as Paul said in his message, so often our worries and our anxieties can take the place of faith and trust in God. In fact, Paul went on to say that worry at the end of the day stems from a lack of trust in God. When we worry, when we are concerned about the things that are going on in life, when we elevate worry to that highest place in our life, what we are saying is that we're not trusting in God's goodness and his provision to provide for us. Yet Jesus helps us see that just as a natural father takes responsibility for caring for his children on earth, our heavenly father takes responsibility for caring for us as his children, promising to provide everything that we need. I don't know about you, but don't you find that worry can almost be kind of addictive? You know, when I face things that I don't know how to handle, worrying about it can be the addictive cycle that keeps me stuck where I am. 
Rather than bringing it before God in prayer or getting wise counsel and good advice around it, getting people in my life who can speak into it, I just run around and around and around in my mind worrying about it. And even though it feels horrible and you have that sick feeling in your, in your gut, you know that you have that heavy feeling in your gut when you're worrying about it, you know that it's not good for you, but somehow we still try to convince ourselves that it's better than the alternative of bringing it before God in prayer or talking to someone else about it. And I love how Jesus puts it in this passage. He says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Is worrying going to solve the issue? Is worrying going to give you more time to fix it? No, of course it isn't. But thankfully, Jesus doesn't just say, don't worry. He doesn't just tell us, stop worrying, full stop, and then he moves on. No, Jesus reminds us that it is out of our revelation of God's incredible love for us that our worry begins to lose its power in our minds. If we don't have a good revelation of God's love for us, it will be very difficult to not worry about our situations. But when we know that God loves us and he is working for the good of those who are called according to his purposes, when we understand that he is our father in heaven, he is our good shepherd who leads us and guides us, then we have a greater understanding which produces in us a greater trust and faith that he will indeed provide for my every need. And then finally, Jesus ends his teaching with verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. What are the priorities in your life? When you stop and think about it, what are the things that you are seeking? When you look at the priorities in your life, what comes out on top. Jesus reminds us that the genius is in the order. When you bring kingdom order to your life, when you have the context of kingdom principles operating in your life, then all of these things will be given to you as well. What is the order of your life? If you were to look at your time management, what do you seek first? If you were to look at your content consumption, what do you seek first? If you were to look at your relationships, the close people in your life, what do you seek first? If you were to look at your budget, what do you seek first? If you were to look at your values and your priorities, what do you seek first? It's not about being legalistic and having a do's list and a do nots list. It's about understanding that our Heavenly Father loves us and wants to give good gifts to those who ask Him. And if we want to experience life in all its fullness, as Jesus says to us in John 10.10, Jesus has given us that pattern there, and it's to seek first, seek first above all other things, His kingdom and His righteousness. And the promise being that out of that order, that our Father will provide for our every need. Now, it's needs, not wants. It's not a promise to receive every materialistic desire that I have. Any parent knows it's not healthy to spoil a child with everything that they want, but we provide for their every need. But Jesus brings us a pretty strong challenge about worry because we don't worry about our wants. We're not worrying about whether we're going to get a Ferrari tomorrow, but we do worry about our needs. And yet it is that very category of our lives that Jesus promises, promises us, will be looked after when we seek first his kingdom. And I can say I have experienced this in my life, in our lives as a family. And Paul on Sunday gave some wonderful stories of how God has come through for him and Jill and their family over the years and then their, their trust and their faith in God in every season. If you haven't had a chance to watch that message, I encourage you to go on YouTube and have a look through it and you can see God's faithfulness throughout their lives as they've trusted in God, as they've stepped out in faith. He has always provided for their every need. And I'm sure in your group, you will be able to share some stories with each other of how God has come through for you time and time again. 
And so as I come to a finish, why not take some time in your group to share some stories? The Bible says that one generation will commend his works to another. Well, that can happen within generations as well. You might not have multiple generations represented in your life group, but you can still encourage each other with the stories of how God has provided for you. You can build each other's faith up, share those stories, and be in awe and wonder at how God has come through for each of you. In a time where the world, where the narrative of the world is focused on how things are going to get harder and more difficult, and perhaps they are, let's lean on each other to keep our faith strong and remind each other that our Father knows our every need. He knows what we need before we even ask it. And He promises, promises, to take care of us. And so let me pray for you and then some discussion questions will come up on the screen. Father, I thank you for your promise to be with us always throughout whatever we might face. You said you would not leave us as orphans, but you would come to us. And so Holy Spirit, right now, I ask your presence to be with every group. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill every person who is engaging right now with faith, and hope and peace in the midst of whatever their situation is right now. I pray that as your people, we would be a people that would seek first your kingdom, that we would bring correct order to our lives of putting your principles in place in our lives, that we might seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And I thank you that your promise is that you will provide for every need in our lives. I pray for those right now who are maybe struggling or going through difficult times, where they are caught in that cycle of worry and worrying about how they're going to pay that next bill or worrying about what is going to happen next. Holy Spirit, would your presence of peace rest upon them right now. Help them to fix their eyes on you and trust that you will indeed provide for them. Just as we as parents know how to give good gifts to our children, thank you, Lord, that you know how to give good gifts to us. And your promise is that you will meet our every need. And so, Lord, I pray your supernatural provision over every person who's engaging now. Lord, with our struggling, would you meet them right in that place? And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to remember your incredible works. Let us not forget the wonderful things you have done in our lives. And Lord, as we share stories in our groups right now of how you've come through for each other, build our faith, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Awesome. Hey, have a wonderful night, life groups. I pray that you... Have some good discussion, share some stories. We'll catch you again another time. God bless.